What's going on guys? Welcome to a new video here in Stockton, California. Today we're gonna be discussing how we knock out cars super, super fast in 30 minutes to help your company. So, you have a team. Okay. How do you knock it out? What's the structure? Okay. All right, so today I'm gonna to be showing you guys exactly what we do to knock out a car in 30 minutes. Uh, and I'm gonna discuss two different methods if you're working in pairs and if you're working solo. So let's start with Let's start with the first option. So if you're working in pairs, I'd recommend doing the outside first, right? Why do I recommend this? Um, it makes it a lot more efficient. If you guys knock out the outside first, it's a big chunk of the detail already, right? So then once you guys are done with the outside, the second person can come in and start vacuuming while the first person um, finishes the outside, touches up the exterior, uh, does the wheel wells, uh, tire shine, windows. And then once the outside is done, then you guys can kind of convene back and finish the interior. So let me ask you a question about that. Yeah. So two people, should one, should one do the left side and one do the right side or should one do the tires only and one do the foaming? That's interesting, man. So we actually don't work on sides. We work from back to front mm. is the way we work. Um, or front to back, it doesn't really matter. Um, but one person is in charge of the entire area. We're not doing sides because then you, you're, you're left with the lack of consistency. If one person knows how to vacuum better, then the right side's gonna look a lot better, the left side's gonna look so hot. Got it, so yeah. you can start from the front, one focus on the grill, exactly. the body, one focus on the tires. Exactly. Got it. And then one, just, just making sure I understand, yeah. and then once you're roughly done and you just gotta do a touch up, one jumps inside and starts vacuuming and all that. Exactly. I think the key here, man, it doesn't really matter how you do it. The key is working uh, simultaneously, right? So being efficient, um, you guys both actively working on something different versus working on the same thing kind of just prolongs things a little bit. All right. So how about this, though? How about if they're training somebody? Yeah, that, that changes a little bit, man. Training is always tough. Um, the reason why I recommend doing it in the winter where you're not that busy, um, when you're, whenever you're trained, I'd recommend letting the trainee do the simpler things, right? Vacuum, uh, apply tire shine, clean the wheels. Um, windows is a bit tough because you kind of have to have some practice doing that. But I would say the more tedious things, it sounds rough, but have the have the trainee do that and teach as you go. All right, so you, of yeah. course you're the boss, you have employees. Uh -huh. What's your job? Do you focus on the most difficult part or you let them learn? How do you do that? It varies a little bit, man. I'm blessed enough to where my guys know how to do everything. Mm -hmm. um, so what I do is I normally do um, the bigger portions of the detail. So for example, I rinse the cars, I foam them. They help me with the more tedious things, such as scrubbing the vehicle, drying the vehicle. If you notice in one of our videos, um, we're already drying the vehicle before I'm even done rinsing it from soap. So if I rinse the right side, for example, um, and I'm moving my way around the vehicle, they're right behind me drying the vehicle as I'm still wetting the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's all about working simultaneously and being effective. What about when you're working by yourself? Yeah, so when I'm working on my, by myself, I always tackle the interior first, 100%. So I make sure I vacuum everything, wipe everything down, do a preliminary wipe down of the door jams, and then I tackle the exterior. Got it. And one, one thing I know about detailers, mm -hmm. they may take a long time focusing on one spot yeah. or one job. Yeah. How do you avoid that? Wait, can you clarify? Yeah, for example, they're like, oh, I got a vacuum extra under the seats. Yeah. I, got, I know a detailer that does the wheels three times. Yeah. You know, well, first of all, why do you think detailers do that? I think it's when, I mean, it's, it's in the nature, right? You're a detailer. I think, however, there is a little bit of an overkill there. Um, if you're doing the wheels three times, chances are you're probably spending too much time on it, unless it's, they're super, super dirty and it needs it, right? But chances are you may not be using the right chemicals. If you notice the way we do vehicles, we don't even use a bucket because our chemicals do the majority of the job. So we do, we do the pre-treatment, right? So if you notice, one of our guys goes around and does all the wheels before we even wet the vehicles. And then I come around and do a second treatment and then we rinse. We never even scrub because the chemicals are very effective. I noticed that. Yeah. Now, correct me, tell me the right way to refer this. Is it a shortcut or is it like, you just not doing the extra steps that everybody does? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's what works for us, mm. right? I think if you Google how to properly wash a wheel, you're gonna get the, the bucket method, mm. right? Where you have a bucket, you're working on every single wheel. It takes longer, right? So for us, this is what works and you get an excellent result. So, I mean, again, like I said at the beginning of the video, whatever works for you, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. If I don't have to scrub, I'm not gonna scrub. Got it. And just to clarify, you mainly do maintenance washes. It's not like full details. Is there a difference? Yeah, of course. I mean, if you're paying for a full detail, chances are the car is really, really filthy mm. and it is going to need that extra little scrub. So in that case, you would. All right. But maintenance, you just go in there, 
do their job, yeah. get out. And, and, and granted, man, it's a maintenance wash, right? So we're here every week. So the car isn't necessarily super, super dirty. From time to time, they do get a little dirty, especially if it rains, but chances are you don't really need to do a whole lot of scrubbing. All right, man, and last question. Yeah. Let's just say there's a detailer out there who's taking two, three hours on a maintenance detail. They just started. Yeah. What are some tips you could give them to reduce that time? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, first and foremost, if, if you're taking that long on a car, it, it's a good and bad. It's good because it means, it shows that you care about your customers and that you're really passionate about it. But just a little tip, try to speed it up a little bit because if you become a little bit faster without cutting shortcuts um, and, and you know providing lower quality work, then you're gonna get more work and you're just gonna grow your company that much more. All right guys, so there you have it. Let me know in the comments below, what are some tips and tricks that you do to speed up your processing when you're doing maintenance washes? Drop a comment down below, hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe.